<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monkey Barrel Comedy Chat Show. Uh, I'm George Fox, the host of this very silly show. And this week, we have a wonderful guest. It's Tom Ballard. Hi, everyone. Tom Ballard. I, I'm not going to ask how you are. No, I, just I don't care. Like, really, I, really, I, we don't really care. Yeah, yeah. But welcome to the start of the show where Thanks, we do the vibe check at the start of the show. So for people who've never seen you do comedy, uh, what would you say your vibe that you bring to a show is? What's your, what's your essence? My essence, Jesus Christ! <laughs> we used to ask what, like, what? How do you describe your comedy? And that's too intense of a question. Yes. I feel ninety percent of the comedians say, "Oh, I'm just a bit of a silly goose." <laughs> <laughs> I think my work is indescribable. It's oh. hard to sort of put into mere words. You know what I mean? Like the kind of work that I'm doing, the spaces that I'm working, the areas that I go to. You have to see it live. Yeah, there's no other way. No, I'm just talking about my dick and politics. <laughs> That's pretty much the that's, vibe. That's good. A lot okay. of yelling. One of my favourite gigs ever was actually at Monkey Barrel. It was at Friends last year and I was yelling and carrying on and someone very politely in the audience asked me to um, to just bring it down a bit. <laughs> it, just, just, oh, it was just being God. really loud actually and uh, it really threw me. It was like the strangest heckle. It was, he wasn't mean. He clearly, like, clearly he was really close to the speaker or something and I was just being too loud. Yeah, so. for, for that one person. I had a situation two or three weeks ago where mm. it was like a table full of ladies that came in uh, at the end of the show or, or at the end of just before the show started after everyone had been seated and they just took a table to themselves yes. and ordered lots of wine and then started talking and I said listen there's a table full of Karens can you please calm down and one of them responded by saying excuse me can I just say we got the wrong bottle of wine and I'm like did I just call you a table full of Karens <laughs> and you just can I speak to the manager to me <laughs> Instantly. They wanted you to resolve that situation. Yeah, I was like, I'm probably not going to deal with that right now because oh. there's actually a show happening. But they look in their face; they had no concept of how insane that was. The fucking public, George. Yeah. The well, fucking to be fair, public. The entire rest of the audience lost their shit laughing at oh, them. So okay. I was well, like, we we get it. We're on the same board. <laughs> um, so so you are an Australian. I am. That's how I identify. Yes. <laughs> So uh, how long how long have you been over here? Did you just come over to, to do the Fringe? Yes. Well, I'm here for yeah, a few months this time around. Mm-hmm. This will be my sixth Edinburgh Fringe. Wow. Um, yes. And I'm just here this weekend doing some uh, gigs at the wonderful Monkey Barrel. And then we'll be back for the Fringe doing my show at Monkey Barrel 2. That's and great. then, yes, Fringe and then touring around the UK in September, October and a little bit of European touring. Yeah. And we're going on a holiday to Portugal near nice. a water slide. That's fair. That's a good idea. That'll be fun. I have so many friends that go to Australia to do comedy there. And then I go, oh, did you do anything there? And they were like, and just freaked out the whole time and just did my show and then came home. It's like, you were there, there for two months. You couldn't have taken a couple of days at the end. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, there's obviously lots of things to do in Melbourne and Sydney, but where all the gigs are happening, mm. like if you really want to experience Australia, yeah. go to the bloody outback, go walk about in that. <laughs> yeah, it's That's very a very long way away from anywhere where there's any decent gigs. Listen, so. I'm, if I go there, I'm going to do two months of gigs and then I'm just going to disappear for three months into the outback. Oh, cool. No plan. I'm just going to go for maybe a couple of days and then be lost for That's a couple awesome. of you will almost certainly get murdered. But yeah, I love but, it. Um, I think that'll be that'll be a great story for you. I feel you like get a lot of material out of it. I'll know myself a lot better before the murder. <laughs> so I'm like, ah, oh, thank God. All right, I've you'll ex- learn never to trust again. Yeah, <laughs> I'll let you accept that. So when when was your first fringe uh, that you came over to do Edinburgh? 2015. 2015. 2015. Oh, yeah. um, I was at uh, Assembly. Boo. Mm, boo. Uh, no, I had a lovely time. <laughs> and I, I love everyone. Thanks for the gigs, actually, that Assembly still keep giving me, even though I banned them. Um, yes, uh, I'd been a couple of times before just to have a look uh, around. Yeah, in, I think we all do that. We all come yes. along and go, what's the gist of this what, place? Yes. What's the vibe? Thank the God. I, anyone who comes to do their first fringe without having been to the fringe, oh. I'm like, whoa, boy. You're going to have a terrible time. And you, see, you do see people who just freak out. They can't deal yeah. with it. And and I say to them, that's reasonable. That's yes. a reasonable reaction. It's a very intense thing. you got to warm up. You need like a few lube years, you know, just yeah. to get yourself <laughs> adjusted to the Edinburgh vibe. I think it was David O'Doherty who uh, quote as a saying that the Edinburgh Fringe, people say it's not a, a, a marathon. It's not a race. It's a marathon. Yes. But he says it's a marathon that you do racing the entire way. <laughs> and I was like, that's correct. So that just is a marathon every day. Every single day. Okay. Yes. Well, to get you comfortable with the podcast, we have a thing we do here where we go back into people's uh, social media. Yes, I've heard about You've this. You've heard about this? It's mm, starting to spread. I people are finding out about it. People are deleting it. posts, I believe, on certain <laughs> social medias. How dare you? you got to scrub. I'll get them. I'll get everyone's social media before they can scrub it. So uh, we're going to take a look at a post here from your, from your Instagram. It's going to come up on screen. Oh, uh, for people who are listening Ugh. to the audio version, uh, can you describe what we're seeing? <laughs> it's dense. This is full on and intense. This is me in the makeup chair when I was working on my 
Um, very successful, mm-hmm. i.e. cancelled, late night <laughs> variety comedy show in Australia, Tonightly with Tom Ballard, which was once beaten in the ratings by a rerun of Juice Bigelow, European Gigolo. This is towards the first one, European no, Gigolo. No, yeah, the sequel, oh, no. brutal. Um, this is towards the end of the run. I think this is in the last week of, um, of the show being on air. They cancelled us and then uh-huh. we still had three more weeks on air. So yeah. those last three weeks were... That's pretty really, pretty great. Just really using harsh. our taxpayers' uh, money. That was great. <laughs> and this, and in the last week of the show, we themed every night with something weird and different. We did a right wing version of the show, and then oh, we wow. did this version, which was, I believe, set in 2060, maybe. Nice. So it's in the future. So I'm an old man, and I spent four hours in the makeup chair having old man prosthetics put onto my face, and it was so uncomfortable and horrific. Yeah. And. Or only just worth it. Only just <laughs> worth doing it. That's incredible it. that it was worth it. Because, I mean, I know from much like behind the scenes on like horror movies and stuff where people would do this for like six or seven hours. Yes. Or like Jennifer Lawrence did the, what was it, the Mystique one from X-Men. Yes. She she quit those movies because of that. Because right. Like, I can't do that every day. So the fact that it was actually worth it. I only did it once. Yeah, I can't imagine it every day. But yes, it was very funny. It did look extremely disturbing. And I really did look like I was in my, what would I have been in in my 70s or 80s or a comic (laughs) version of that. And then this photo is us peeling the prosthetics off, which is the most beautiful sensation. (laughs) I I, really recommend it. I satisfying. I look like Joe Biden though, really, don't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could have started the show and introduced uh, Putin on as your first guest and said, sorry, not that. Uh, yeah, wow, that was intense. So, so did you have to do the whole thing with the straw up your nose to breathe and then put stuff on or was it like a... I think it's nice my real nose. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of like, um, yeah, plastic sort of prosthetic sheets that they put around it. Yeah. And there's a lot of sagging and um, a lot of wrinkles and uh, yes, a real real double chin. All, it- all my horrific features are really <laughs> accentuated. Yeah, it's like getting one of those caricatures done at the beach, <laughs> but like you have to sit there for five hours as they slowly put it on. I am in roller skates. You can't say that in this shot, but I... <laughs> I have roller skates there. This is amazing because I, 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 I thought that you were going to tell me this was you dressed up as an Australian PM or something because it has the vibe of like an, uh, an Australian sure. politician for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit Murdoch. It could be Clive Palmer, who's one yeah. of our wonderful billionaires. I know one of the, the prime ministers of Australia ended up in the Mad Max movies as like a character. He's He plays some character, the guy with his nipples pierced. What? I think he was a politician. That's what I heard, unless I was lied to. Um, so there's a guy with a shaved head. He's like the, oh God, what is he called? He's not the bullet farmer. He's the gas town guy, I think. But he's got like pierced nipples and he's in a suit. And what I heard was that he was a politician years ago. <laughs> and George Miller was like, do you want to be in my movie? Okay. I think, Have I I think what you've done to? here is that's an actor called John Howard. Is it? And we had a prime minister called John Howard. Is that what has happened? They are two separate human beings. <laughs> I I'm swear to you, I watched a YouTube video and it said with n- n- wasn't joking around. They were a hundred percent sure these were the same people. And I, I was can like, be oh, wrong, okay. but I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. Listen, there. we live in a world now where the guy that did the Apprentice, was yeah, the American hey, president, sure. so anything is possible. It could now. happen. The other John, real John Howard, is real. He's a right wing ghoul. He probably oh, wouldn't go in the Mad Max just, movies. I don't think he would. He wouldn't. He wouldn't understand how horrific everything was. I'm like this is great. The actor John Howard played a politician in a very popular series called Sea Change as well, where he's like uh-huh. a local mayor or businessman, I think. So what you're saying is I'm wrong, you are wrong, but it's very understandable how I'm wrong. I see where you're coming from. There. I see where you're going from. <laughs> to yes. back yes. that up. That's amazing. So you were doing, how, how many times a week was your was your show on? Was it nightly? So it was literally nightly, yeah. Wow. Four original shows a week and then the Friday night was a best of. Oh, wow. And um, we got into a lot of trouble. Uh, people, did, yes, the right-wing people did not enjoy the, the program. Um, nobody watched it, but we had a lot of fun making it. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, looking back on some, some of it's pretty cringe. Some of it was a bit shit. One night we had seven people in our studio audience. Oh, Very wow. hard to get people along. But some of the sketches uh, really, really stand up. But I thought we were doing some interesting things. Yeah, and why why wouldn't you do it? Even if you knew it wasn't going to work out in the end. Oh, you sure. have that opportunity to make it. It's weird because there's not really... I, I feel like America has such a like history of like late night shows. Mm. I feel like Australia, I've, I've, I've seen numerous ones that have existed. Uh, the UK doesn't really have that. Yeah. It's not really ever a thing. Never landed it. You what the Jonathan Ross show. Yeah. You tried Graham with Norton. the one show. Graham Norton. But yeah. they're, they're like more like 
a Friday night thing for mm. people to watch while they're finished their run, which we also have. We have that in Ireland as well, which is uh, the Late Late Show, which is where they get the most uh, uncharismatic human being in the entire country to host a show live for two hours every Friday. Oh, and everyone hates it, and everyone on the show seems to hate working there and wanting to get fired. <laughs> and it's run from like 1951 to today. Whoa! So just recently, Patrick Kilty, the comedian, took yes, it over. Yes. And he's the first person that has any charm or. Should you look at him and you go, oh, you should be hosting this. This is great. Yes. But everyone before was just robots, just nothing behind the eyes, guys who just had no charm at all. <laughs> there was a, a famous episode where like Bridget Nielsen came on and like just beforehand, she'd found out like a family member had been in a car accident and they'd turn out they were fine, but she just found that out. And so she, they were like, do you want to do the show? Yeah. And she's like, no, it's live. I'll do it. Comes out. And his first question is, oh, I heard you had a, an interesting phone call backstage. No! Would you like to tell the audience about it? She started crying <laughs> on live TV. So it's, in Ireland, it's just an excuse for people to just down a box bottle of wine and tweet what the fuck was that <laughs> and they would often have comedians they had Jimmy Carr on one time and right after Jimmy Carr was a woman who'd married a pirate ghost <laughs> so she'd communed with a pirate ghost and she'd married it and I swear the people were more endeared to her than to, the, to any comedians they were just like we want a weirdo give us a weirdo right now <laughs> Oh my god, well, that sounds that sounds awesome. I guess whenever you summarise a horrific TV show, it sounds awesome in theory. I mean, have you heard of Hey Hey It's Saturday? Are you familiar no, with this no. at all? This is an Australian program that was very very popular. It was yeah. on Saturday nights, of course, and it makes absolutely no sense. There was a, a an ostrich a yeah. puppet on there called Oz the Ostrich. He was a pink ostrich. Um, there was a Pluck a Duck, who was yeah. a duck character as well that used to give I away items. Um, we had a Red Faces talent show. Now, famously, um, in 2009, mm -hmm. a group called the Jackson Jive came onto the, the program. And this okay. is a, a program, a, a group that had been on the talent show segment yeah. back in the 90s, I think. They returned to the show in a glorious return in 2009 uh, in blackface and performed oh um, a Jackson 5 song. And Harry Connick Jr. is on one of the judges for the, the um, oh. uh, talent show. And, he hold, and you have to give a score out of 10 and he holds up a sign saying zero. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Australia could not realise, what? why was Harry Connick Jr. got a problem with this? This is fine. Oh, this God. is good and funny. Oh, my God. I remember doing a, a show in Ireland. Well, they wanted me to do a TV show in Ireland where it was a bunch of comedians would react to old clips of Irish TV shows. And what they brought on uh, was an old Irish singer. I forget, I forget her name, but she she did the same thing. She had was in blackface singing like uh, an old song and... They showed us that clip and I, I, you know, it's like 2017, 2016 and I reacted to it the horrified way yes. I should. And they were like, yeah, we're not going to use any of that. because <laughs> we, we were just kind of looking for people to laugh at how silly it was. And I was just like, OK, I, I just did the reaction a normal human being would have. I laughed at how horrific it was. And they were like, yeah, we're not going to use that because we're also going to have her on the show oh. going. I thought it was fine. I was like, OK, no, I don't want to be any part of this at all. She was going to defend. Oh. They were going to have her on the show. I, I mean, I, I don't think it ever even happened. So at some point, someone went, yeah, we're not doing this. But I was like, why would that be the first clip? Dude, I saw a clip on YouTube the other day of an interview between um, uh, uh, William Buckley Jr. Mm -hmm. and Groucho Marx in 1962 mm -hmm. in which uh, Buckley says, uh, what about blackface, like uh, minstrel shows? And Groucho Marx is like, look, I grew up on minstrel shows. I think they're good, but I don't think we should do it anymore because it's yeah. offensive to black people. Yeah. This is in 1962. <laughs> And we're still working through these issues it today. Was so clear. It was like, oh, we solved it there. There you go. Right there and then <laughs> someone's made a, a, a fantastic. I love, uh, there's so many great Groucho Marx stories about like him having like a witty like comeback for someone. Yeah. But my favorite one I ever heard was he was on a plane and this lady saw him and she's like, oh my God, it's Groucho Marx. And he's on the plane and not that he's just kind of sleeping and dozing. And then the plane lands and uh, she's at the, the thing where you collect your luggage and Groucho Marx is standing there and she just kind of goes up to him and goes, um, oh, sorry, I just wanted to say, I noticed you were on the plane and I have to say, I, I thought you'd be funnier. And quick as a flash said, lady, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that for me is the best. Just go fuck yourself. Like even Groucho Marx, the greatest comeback king at a certain point is like, fuck <laughs> off. I'm on a plane. <laughs> so quick. He just thought of that on the top of his head. How flash. does he do it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It is time to gamify this stream. Uh, we have a, 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 an awkward question that you're probably not going to want to answer, which is your most cringeworthy moment on stage. It's Oof. a question that 
Uh, you might not want to answer, but thankfully you have a chance to not answer it because we have cups. We're going to do the cup game. We've got uh, 30 seconds where we're going to flip and see how many times you can land it. Or even if you just get it the first time, that can be yours. So the way this game works is you try to yep. flip it up. Flip it, okay. Flip it and get it on yep. this side, isn't it? This side? You start like that. Start yeah. like this. And then you want it to look like that. I want it to look like this. No. No, we start like this. No. I start, start like this. Like that, and then you want it to look like that. So I need to flip it and land it like that. Yeah, that's I think you're 100% wrong. That is not the rules that, we've done so far, but I it's like... It's not the rules we've done so far, but that is flip. <laughs> we've had <laughs> so <laughs> much hell from people coming... Oh, well, that's, you don't know how to do flip cup? I'm sorry, I didn't go to fraternity. <laughs> I've never done flip cup at all, Wasn't so it's all good for me. Wasn't part of that group that all the presidents... I've never <laughs> gone and prayed in front of a big owl statue in the woods, all right? I don't know how it works. Okay, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna play this game, and uh, obviously, are you left or right handed? I'm right handed. You're right handed. So every time we've to play this, I have had an advantage. Okay, and I like that. Oh, I have to do it with the left right. hand. All okay. right, no, you can do whatever hand you want. All Here right. we go. All right, three, two, one. This this is entertaining, is it? Oh, I I mean, the, the reason we put a time limit is, is, is so it wouldn't go too long. Oh, oh that was kind of cool. I mean. <laughs> I feel like these definitely aren't the right rules. Yeah! Oh, God damn it. All right. Okay. <laughs> what does that mean? What do I win? I mean, uh, I have to answer this question. You can also, <laughs> you can also answer this question if you want. Uh, so the question is most cringeworthy moment on stage. Oh, God. Most cringeworthy moment on stage. I once did... Uh, a, a, a corporate gig for Guinness in Dublin. It was mm. one of the worst shows of my life because everyone was so drunk. They didn't want to see comedians. Right on before me, someone had booked a juggler and they booed him until he left. How do you boo a juggler? <laughs> he was really good. Was he a good juggler? He was okay. really good. That's At one point great. he was like, he was like, oh, and then pretended like he made a mistake. Yeah. And then went back into it and like, oh, it obviously wasn't a mistake. And then someone from the crowd shouted, that was a genuine mistake. And I was like, what a weird <laughs> thing to heckle it's clearly not and then came off i went on and this is for the people of guinness you say, this who is for the, all the people who worked at guinness okay. who uh this was like 2012 or 13 so maybe they're nicer now but at the time they were all 100 percent cons so uh, well, you just had the financial crash you know people are in a bad mood things are going a tough, pretty tough for ireland it's like they'd never we don't drank. believe in magic or juggling anymore it felt like it was the first time they'd ever been allowed to drink the products that they <laughs> made right, yes. they just got oh hey this is incredible so uh, I they, they did that for a while and then like after a few minutes a, a guy stepped on stage and went I don't know what you're talking about but me and my friend want to have a dance off and they had a DJ who was like bringing everyone on and he was like cool let's do that and he just played some music and so I had to just officiate a, a dance off between these two uh, and let me tell you they were both horrendous yes. but the great part was the second guy tried to do a spin and his head like came down and hit and he went way and he had like a small cut up of his oh. head and I was like what an idiot okay great there you go everyone uh, I'm still getting paid for this fuck all of you put the microphone in and left so that was that was a that was a pretty bad one that sounds awesome uh, if that's as yeah, bad as it gets I mean uh, how long are you supposed to do I think they, it was insane. They wanted me to do half an hour. Yeah. And I was like, I think I did like, it ended up being 17 minutes all in. And okay. they were like, we're so sorry. You were going to give you extra money. And, and you I still got like, extra you. money. Oh, that's, like, that's great. I was like, it was that bad? No one ever pays extra money. Uh, and then what was, uh, re, this was like a, a year or two ago. I, I did a show out in Kirkcaldy and uh, I was like the, the headliner. So I did 40 minutes mm. and lovely crowd, lovely show. And afterwards, uh, just getting ready to leave, a lady just came up and went, oh, that was great. Would you do it again? And I said, I'd come back yeah, in the future if I was doing a different show. And she goes, no, was that not your first time? I was oh. like, you think I did a 40 minute show with callbacks and references and crowd work? You think I you just think I just walked on stage for the <laughs> first time ever? With that amount of material <laughs> that didn't go wrong. Well, that's a lovely compliment to you. She though. just had no concept of that, and I was just like, okay, but you couldn't be. And when you said to... do it again, you mean like you've just done your first gig? Are yeah. you gonna have a crack at another one? Exactly. She was like, <laughs> "Would you do this again?" Because <laughs> it didn't seem like she was even sure. People's ideas about stand up are amazing. A guy in the show last night, uh, it was a fun show. He was a lovely guy. He said nice thing. He enjoyed my set, and we're chatting afterwards. And he's like, oh, yeah, I go to Top Secret um, Comedy Club in London and see shows all the time. And I know that the comedians there have friends planted in the audience to do stuff mm -hmm. because they, they're they so funny, right? Like, like 
I saw one guy and someone got up yeah. and to, to go get a drink. And and the comedian was so quick with a funny line. It's like it had to be prearranged. Yeah. And I was like, no, no it's not. There's not a plant to stand up. We've just been in that situation so many oh times that maybe a comedian has a great line about someone going to get a drink. Yeah. But people believe we have this like. They either think that we're absolute amateurs and we do forty minutes, you yeah. know, off the cuff, or we've got an elaborate puppet master. There's no in between. Plant system. Yeah. It's so weird where somebody will just be so sure like that person was planted. There's no <laughs> way. Or, or when that person like, said something, you called him a fuckhead. I mean, like yeah. that you have to have written that. Like, <laughs> but that guy says he works in IT. How could you have known that? <laughs> you implied that that's a boring job. I mean, come on, man. You're not this, taking me for a ride. <laughs> I this, see through your machinations. But this is how conspiracy theorists get started. They sure. just go, "Oh, there's something going on here. Yeah. This is all fake." I like, see the Matrix, man. Uh, there, there's there, there was a comedian whose clip went viral, and I uh, it was watched on like Fox News or whatever, or, or some networks in the, in the US, and everyone underneath was like, "Obviously, this could be faked." And it's like this, I've never seen a more genuine reaction right. to like a weird job that somebody <laughs> had in the audience, and they were just like. This is probably a setup. And yeah. all the comments underneath were just people just going, set up, set up, set up, fake, set up. And then you'll see something that is so obviously fake, like a TikTok or a video, and people fall for it hook, line and sinker. <laughs> There's a guy, an English guy, who films these videos where he, and it's like all his videos are called like me interacting with a Karen. And they're so fake. Mm. And it's his voice in every single video. And it's like one of them is he rented an Airbnb and someone comes to the front door and all the actors and actresses he gets are terrible. <laughs> So I was like, hey, mate, I'd like you to leave the house. You're not allowed there anymore. <laughs> and he's like, oh, but I've rented it for the week. Well, I don't care. I want my friend to stay there now. And it's like, what is this? What am I watching this dramatic theatre? And it will have 20 million <laughs> views on yes. TikTok. And all the comments underneath are just like, this is a disgrace. I can't believe this happens. We need to bring laws to stop this kind of thing. <laughs> can't do that. I'm like, how is this a show? How is this a thing? I mean, good luck to him. <laughs> if you figure out how to <laughs> yeah. hack the algorithm or whatever. Yeah, at one point that guy is going to try and do a stand-up show and he's going to bring actual plants and we'll all be like, see? And everyone will be like, no, that was real. That, that seemed, was real. That seemed genuine. God. Um, God, insane. Okay, we've gotten through that. Well done. You've won. Is that the first time I've ever been beaten? I'm disgraced by that. <laughs> How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourself, <laughs> ashamed George of myself. Fox. So uh, we have some questions from last week's guest, which was the wonderful Mary Elaine Robertson. Now, Mary Elaine is a lunatic. Okay. So these clips are going to be wild. Yep. Uh, so Mary Elaine has sent in three questions. I have already been informed that normally uh, people send in three questions and they'll just be like quick questions. Mary Elaine has left space uh, for you to answer the questions. <laughs> But also, she's not left enough space okay. for you to ask questions. So just after every question, Marilyn will be silent and stare in the camera for about five seconds <laughs> and then give you a review of your, please don't answer the question in that space. We'll come to it afterwards. Uh, but another thing we do is uh, I want to know uh, how long do you think it took Marilyn to send this clip in after we asked for it? Because we know comedians can be a little bit lazy or distracted or doing stuff sometimes. And we've had somebody who sent it in immediately right. within like a couple of minutes. We've had someone who sent it in uh, five days after being asked, how long do you think it took Mary Lane without, without seeing the video? How long do you think it took Mary Lane to, to send in the clip? Well, after a lunatic, you say? Yes. My, we have a few lunatics in Australia and they are comedy geniuses mm -hmm. whose lives are train wrecks yes. and they're unable to answer an email. <laughs> Some of them even struggle. I still have like a hotmail yeah. email address. <laughs> and if you ask them to do anything, that will not happen for a very long time. So I'm going to say at least a week. Okay, at least a week. Okay, let's let's check out the clip from Mary Lane Robertson. Hi, Tom Ballard. It's me, Mary Lane Robertson. And I had some questions for you. Like, number one, your new show, The Edinburgh Fringe, was got, called Good Point Well Made. I want you to make a really bad point for me right now, but really well made. Please, well make a bad point. <laughs> Very well, there we go. Uh, very well done. <laughs> Next thing, I like to demonstrate what I am capable of. See these stingy nettles? Oh. I can, without hurting myself, pick leaves off them. Okay, another two takes to really hurt myself. <laughs> what unusual skills do you have that you don't normally get to show people because you aren't surrounded by nettles? <laughs> Tell us an unusual skill. Yes. Cap to answer. Uh, that is an unusual yeah. skill. Thank you. Um, but I'm very proud of you for having it. Lastly, Tom Ballard, um, 
when I think of a horse, I think of something hearty and full of itself, but also like a bit derpy, you know, the kind of thing like bumbles and like, hi guys. So there's kind of like a conflict, you could say, an oxymoron of a character, like a friendly bubbling full of themselves. What other animal do you think their persona and personality are at conflict with each other and why? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't think I have to describe the last question more. I don't need to explain it, okay? I think it's perfectly sensible. It's the kind of question I'd ask someone on a first date, right? George, none of this lit from you. I'm not. Bye. Bye, Tom. Thanks for answering my questions. Bye, See much. you at the friend. See you, mate. There we go. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the, the mental health crisis in this country is real, okay? <laughs> and we need to fix the NHS. <laughs> I think I feel like I undersold how insane that would no, be. No, that was uh, lovely. Lovely though. I love Absolutely. this. She seems fun. We should okay. hang out. So uh, the first thing we asked was the was the time estimate. So you said about a week. Uh, normally, we, I, I would turn to Claire, our producer, to tell you, but thankfully, Marilyn sent another clip in explaining how long it took. Oh, let's okay. see. Also, I'm well aware that George is going to be like, Oh, Tom, why don't you think Marilyn sent in those questions? <laughs> what? <laughs> Who was that? But um, I would like to answer now and say I sent those questions in two weeks before I was even on the podcast. Keep you on your toes with time travel. <laughs> Stop recording. There you go. So it was two weeks minus, uh, we think. Was, was, was that accurate or is there another time? It was two days. It was two days, okay. Two days before she was on the podcast. Okay. Two days after. after. Oh, after. Okay, right. Gotcha. Okay. Brilliant. Who's a, a liar? <laughs> wow. Um, gosh, there's so that much going lot. on there. There was a lot going on there. Thankfully, we've written in the questions so we can ask them again yes. in, a, in a more understandable way, which was uh, question number one was uh, Marilyn wanted you to make a bad point, but make it well. Okay. Incredibly difficult. Yes. A bad point. Make a bad point, but do it really well. It feels like every question Marilyn asked there was to throw a spanner into the works of the show running smoothly. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Um, can you give me a bad point? Can we brainstorm one? Ooh. I'm just so used to making good ones, guys. Okay. This is a real stretch for me. A bad point. All my point. takes are so hot and correct. A bad point well. Uh, exotic animal. Exotic pets are better than cats and dogs. Exotic animals are better than cats and dogs. Yeah, like people who have like snakes or birds. It's actually better than having a cat or a dog. Yes. I think that's an insane opinion. Uh, that is an insane opinion and I will make it thusly. Bill Bailey, one yeah. of the funniest dudes and nicest men I've ever met in the world of comedy, lives in a menagerie, I believe, with monkeys and snakes. I don't know if he has cats or dogs, but he's cool. Therefore... <laughs> That's a good position. <laughs> wow, that is a bad point, and you have made it well. Well done. That'll well do. done. You're welcome, Marjorie. Okay, Marilyn's uh, second question Marilyn, sorry, uh, sorry. is what unusual skill, you can call her anything, that's fine. All right, cool. <laughs> She's floating between names and vibes and <laughs> uh, personas. Number two is what unusual skill do you have that you don't normally get to show off? Um, an unusual skill. I am, I studied Japanese in high school. Oh. And I was all right at it. Um, I've forgot, I've stopped it in year 12 and I've mm. forgotten a huge amount of it. But for whatever reason, it just sort of clicked in my head and I did okay. And, um, I, I really enjoy speaking Japanese. Sometimes people think I'm doing a voice, like in a problematic way, <laughs> but that's just me committing. To... I have, uh, there's, there's clips on like, uh, YouTube and TikTok of like, uh, like like very white American guys that go to Japan uh. and then like go to a restaurant and just chat and then after a certain point just start speaking fluently in Japanese right. and people are just like, whoa, whoa. What? what is this? Or he'll go to like a cafe and people will start talking about him and someone like, there was, there was a situation where two girls were just like, oh, I like that guy's shirt yeah. and then they're chatting and he's just like, oh, thank you very much. And they were like, <laughs> what? what? They're completely blown away. Japanese people like, will get, if you have the most basic, if you tr make any attempt, they yeah. will... Because they're so polite and lovely, they will be like, you're a, you're a fucking genius. <laughs> eh? Nande? Jaws of this, ne? Yeah. So. But yeah, in, Jap in Japanese, there's, uh, you know, there are phrases in, um, written in katakana, which is the third alphabet they have yeah. when they're using like Western phrases. So mm -hmm. like McDonald's is McDonaldo. Yeah. Um, and I just enjoy saying that. I'm not mocking Japanese people. I really love, I really love <laughs> 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 I'm doing this generally. McDonaldo. <laughs> 
Oh, I, have, I have seen a lot of the KFC, which is very popular in Japan because oh, yes. they celebrate Christmas by going to KFC. Yes, yes. And it was it was just like KFC figured out like, hey, we could make Christmas our thing in Japan <laughs> the way Coca Cola has co opted Santa Claus in Great. the Western world. And I I loved it. I just seeing all the different meals that people would get on yeah. Christmas Day from KFC. Because that's so sweet. Weird. Is that the only bit of Christmas that they do? I think so. Yeah, I think okay. it, it well, just because KFC was the first one to bring it in. Yeah. Just be like, hey, get your Christmas, and you can pre-order it. So they like because they sell out each time. They're like, pre-order your meal, and you can come pick it up for Christmas Day. <laughs> But it's so, it's so celebrate funny. JC with KFC. <laughs> I don't think he's a part of it at all. Oh, right. I think it's just like, oh, Santa and the North Pole, and we get it. And chicken, and fried chicken, of course. <laughs> the Colonel, of course. Jesus couldn't go. KFC got ski disco. <laughs> hey, Jesus, do you like KFC? <laughs> See, it's fun. The only uh, Japanese I think I know is Baka, which I think is idiot. Baka da ne. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen, is it Batsu? Bat, Batsu's punishment, isn't it? I've seen like some comedy from Japan where it's the Batsu games, where there's like punishment shows oh, where great. if you laugh, you get hit. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, which became Last One Laughing. Yeah, right? became right. Last One Laughing eventually. Yeah, 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 which was uh, very cool. Okay, number three. What animal do you think has a conflicting persona and personality, <laughs> and, and, and why? I guess. What was the point about the horse? She thinks. So she thinks a horse is a very noble creature, right. but at the same time, she thinks it has a real kind of. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> What's going on? Want to ride me with a saddle? That kind of mix of character. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, what what would be? I I, I was thinking rats because like rats, I was like ugh. But people who have pet rats say they're incredibly adorable, yes. and affectionate, very nice. And they only live for like a year or so, right? Uh, which is weird because you see you see people who have ha- had rat pets will have a, like a tattoo that will say like 2020 to 2020 late <laughs> winter <laughs> for their rat or something that didn't didn't last that long. Oh. But apparently they're very they're very very nice. Uh, right, yeah, I've heard this, and, and they're a lot cleaner than we all yeah, think. Yeah, they're apparently yes. incredibly clean. And apparently they they really like bond with the person that takes care of them, which. Oh. I do not, because a rat in my head is like one of those old Don Bluth movies where just like, Bleh. they're like a bad guy. <laughs> Man, they call me rat face. That's my vibe. Um, well, I mean, maybe lions are in that category because I feel like the marketing on lions mm. like gives them like they're pretty awesome. King of yeah. the jungle. And then every time you go to the zoo, they're just doing fuck all. <laughs> Absolutely. Barely, sometimes they're not even out on display. They just hang yeah. out in the shade or they're like, oh, the lions aren't out today. I'm like, well, come on. Come on. Let's get a little bit of... Roaring, a bit of noise. You think I don't pump. want to do gigs sometimes? <laughs> you got to turn it on. It's called showbiz. Come yeah. on, lions. But then sometimes I go to the zoo and I see like the penguins and I go, they're, they're, they're the openers for the show and they're doing great work. I respect <laughs> you. They're open spots. You come in, you're all dressed up. They wear suits like a lot of comedians do in their first year. <laughs> they do a little dance. I'm like, that's great. That's great. I don't want to watch it for an hour. Sure, sure, well, I'll sure. I'll see 10 minutes of that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the Lions could easily do an hour, but they just can't be bothered. They're like, if it's not an arena, I'm not getting out of bed. <laughs> The animal that really disturbs me more than anything else is the Komodo dragon. <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen a documentary about I've, them. I have, but they yeah. are just they they're, they're like the di- the closest thing we have to a dinosaur yeah. and still around and just absolute killing machines. Yeah. They can run really fast. They will rip a man to shreds. They have a bite where if they bite into you, whatever enzymes they have in their mouth, it will cause the bite to rot almost immediately uh, and become infected. And uh, you're like, uh, "What the hell?" What a nightmare. And they've got this something, and I need to find out more about this, that they can, like, just produce a baby. Like, a Komodo oh, really? dragon can immaculately create a child, apparently. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Ugh. They're freaky, man. But they are freaky. The fact that they are so incredibly fast yes. as well. Um, so huge. I'm so I don't know if that answers the question. But, yeah, I reckon the, the marketing, the perception, what you think of when you think of a majestic lion yeah. and every experience I've ever had with a lion, big gap there. I think seals as well would fit into that because if you see seals in the beach, you're like, oh, my God, they're so cute. And if you see seals in any nature documentary, you're like, those fucking killers. <laughs> They those do stink murderers. too. If you ever go yeah. near a seal colony, oh, yeah. it smells real bad. <laughs> there was a, a thing where, I think this came from the podcast recently, we are talking about it, where uh, there was a seal came ashore uh, and someone was trying to have a wedding and the seal came ashore and started masturbating in front of everyone. Whoa! Just hitting itself and everyone was just like, well, we're not going to take those photos. <laughs> <laughs> to, and, and to me, it's like, oh, your, your uh, matrimony has been blessed by the god 
of of love and passion himself. He's beached himself for you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, this is a horny ass wedding, y'all. Yeah. Um, Monkeys across the board always deliver. Just it's never disappointing. Always great. Monkeys apes. I'm on board. I, I saw. I went to Bronx Zoo and I saw two gorillas. 69ing, yeah. and it That's was the finest great. day of my life. I, I went to a wedding uh, in Cyprus once and... Saw two gorillas 69ing. <laughs> <laughs> they had a lovely wedding, and then uh, we're outside, and like, they had like a big like uh, tent set up, and I just noticed, oh my God, there's a red moon coming up. I was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And then a moth flew in, and then a bat flew in and got caught there for a few minutes and then flew out. And I was like, you guys are having a fucking vampire wedding. This, is, incredible. this is a proper Dracula... Castlevania <laughs> ass wedding. Did the bats start jerking off as well? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really into bats, so I don't need to tell you what happened. It right. was very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, but I remember being like, oh, it's a vampire wedding. They were like, please don't call it that. <laughs> please don't tweet about this. I saw you taking a picture of the bat and the red moon. Please don't make this a viral thing. This cost thing. us $40,000. Please <laughs> do not dismiss it as a twilight wedding. <laughs> exactly. So we've learned a lot about you today. We've learned about uh, lions. We've learned, we've, we've laughed. Learned, we've learned, we've laughed. Uh, we, we've we seen you do uh, genuine uh, Japanese. <laughs> Just want to clarify for everyone at home. Hi. Nihongo o hanasukoto katekimasu. That's accurate. That's okay. That's good. And uh, what do you have coming up in the future in terms of comedy shows or live events you'd like to tell people at home about to come and see? Gosh, I would love people to come see my Edinburgh Fringe show. I am at the beautiful Monkey Barrel, Mm -hmm. Monkey Barrel 2 at 4.20 p.m. That'll that'll never not be funny. I'm doing the whole fringe. I'm not taking a single day off because I love making people laugh so much. That's insane. It's not a great call. I'm regretting it immediately, but I love people. Remember we talked earlier about people going to the fringe for the first time? Oh, yes, yes. I feel like that moment right now. You should have taken, I'm going to see you halfway through. (laughs) Right, made the call. Yeah, I might cancel a few. (laughs) But yeah, come to that. That show is called Good Point Well Made. It features good points being made well. Mm -hmm. And then after Edinburgh, touring all over the place around the UK to all the little centres, Manchester, Birmingham. Leeds, Liverpool, uh, Brighton, um, all those kind of cool places. I Norwich. Like, I like referring to those places as little centres. So that's <laughs> a good, that's good. I like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, that's not a good plug. You know, the places that aren't uh, London, a real city. Um, oh, that's not going to go well. Anyway, all the details are at comedy.com.au. If people look me up on socials at Tom C. Ballard, they'll see all the dates there. And uh, yeah, it's my first ever UK tour, so I'd love people to come along. Amazing. Please, so please do, please like that. If you like the podcast, please do... Uh, share it and post about the podcast leave reviews uh, send it to an enemy if you want uh, just the more people that watch it the better uh, <laughs> for myself for Merlin uh, from Claire from Tom thanks for watching the show and we'll catch you again real soon bye ciao matane there's something hiding under the ice imitation of a sound there's something standing behind the door would you like